Hebrews 9.24 Christ has entered not into a sanctuary made with hands, a copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Good morning. We are here this morning with one purpose and one purpose only, that is to worship our Almighty God. Let us set aside any worries, any troubles that we have, anything that would distract us from worshiping Him this morning. We will now proceed to the opening song. Blessed Sunday, everybody. One of my favorite parts about being here in the choir loft is I can see the whole church, the whole body of Christ, standing, sitting, and kneeling before the cross of God to worship Him. And while it may be sad to see an empty church right now, let us all remember that through Jesus Christ, we are able to enter the holy sanctuary of God. We can worship Him wherever we are. In the meantime, as we wait until we are able to come together again in this place and worship Him, to sit in these pews, let us remember that we are the people of the risen King. Let us praise Him and sing to Him. Let us rejoice with one heart, with one voice. O Church of Christ, rejoice. Come, people of the The morning star of grace From the shifting shadows of the earth We will lift our eyes to Him Where steady arms of mercy reach To gather children in Rejoice, rejoice
Praise God for that song. As we continue to worship the Lord, it is only proper that we confess our sins before a holy God. Let us use the confession. Let us confess our sins against God in our neighbor. Together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. We'll now have the responsorial psalm. Let us stand and read the psalm responsively. Our psalm for this morning is found in Psalm 116, verses 10 to 17. Verse 10, I believe, therefore I spoke. I am greatly afflicted. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will pay my vows to the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. Together, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Please be seated for the lesson. Our reading for today is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 35 to 51. Again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and, seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated, Teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated to Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. 
And he said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Word of the Lord. We will now proceed to the sermon. A very good morning to everyone. It's good to have all of you worshiping with us. And before I proceed to the sermon, I would like to say uh, how blessed we are to hear of how the things we are doing in our parish have been ministering to a lot of you, uh, especially to our members. It has made all the hard work worth it, knowing that we can still worship together and encourage one another during these crazy times. I'd also like to express that we are one with you in heart, especially as we hear of some of our members who are having it tough during these times. Some of you are worried. Some of you are having a hard time getting your necessities. And it truly makes us realize how important it is even for just once a week to be able to come together, uh, to, to be with our God, how it helps us mentally and spiritually uh, to, to be able to get through things, get through life together. Over the week, I got to read an article from Forbes on how people are scrambling to look for things to do while on quarantine. According to this article, we panic in times like these because we are so used to making ourselves busy. We either busy ourselves with work, social media, TV shows, TikTok, and many other things. Even our definition of rest is often about being busy. Traveling, watching a movie, shopping, getting anything that will fill our minds. When we are forced away from these things and we run out of things to do, pausing and reflecting makes us uncomfortable. But times like these are actually a good opportunity for us to pause and think about why we are so busy in the first place. Especially for us Christians, we should probably take this moment to evaluate the things we are busy with and ask, are these activities before and during this lockdown consistent with who I should be? Now is a good chance for us to remember that who we are should define what we should do and not the other way around. One thing this quarantine has opened our eyes to is how lost we sometimes are. We have been lost to this materialistic and consumeristic world to the point that if we can no longer buy stuff or travel or work, it feels like we don't know ourselves anymore. That is because we allow the things we do to define who we are. It is a result of mindlessly filling our lives with anything and everything that comes our way. That is a sad reality, don't you think? Many of us Christians have already lost our sense of identity that should define how we live. And so, what we choose to do with this quarantine period is extremely crucial. Instead of just waiting passively until all this is over, we need to actively grab this time as an opportunity. An opportunity to do what? An opportunity to find ourselves in Christ once again, so that knowing who we truly are can begin to define all that we do and all that we will be. Our passage today is a continuation of our journey on the 11 events at the start of Jesus' ministry, and we are talking about the calling of the first disciples. I believe it is timely to look at this event because as we go through the daily grind of life, we may notice that we are slowly being eaten up by the world. We may find that our actions look more and more like as if we belong to the world rather than to Christ. And so it is important for us to go back to this event of the calling of the first disciples and remember a wonderful truth about our own calling, about our own faith. 
That is, that Jesus found us and called us to be his own. Allow me to say that once again. Jesus found us and called us. We don't belong to this world. We belong to him. The first thing we need to remember is that we have been found by Christ. What does this idea of being found mean to us? We are not talking about God not being able to see or reach you before. Because, of course, He knows who you are and where you are even before He made you. We are talking about that special time when we had made Jesus known to you. In our passage, Jesus found Andrew and another disciple by going to the place where John the Baptist was preparing the way for him. Yes, John the Baptist was the one who told people, Behold the Lamb of God! And yes, it was Andrew and the other disciple who followed him on their own initiative. But it was Jesus who came to them. And when the two disciples were bold enough to ask where he lived, they got the invitation, come and see. The next day we read that Jesus wanted or decided to go to Galilee. And there the Bible says he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Here we see two instances of Jesus intentionally looking for people who would eventually be his disciples. Then he was introduced by these men to their family and friends, to Simon Peter and Nathanael. Jesus did not just say to them, Oh, I know you. You are the son of so-and-so. Instead, we see something far more interesting. To Simon, Jesus gave a new name, Peter, meaning a stone, probably signifying the role that Jesus has for him. And to Nathanael, Jesus showed his power by showing him that he knew his heart. Nathanael was probably a devout Jew, and he really wanted to please God and was waiting for the Messiah. We know this because of several things. First, because Philip introduced Jesus as the one whom Moses and the prophets wrote about. Second, it seems that he he knew that the Messiah doesn't come from Nazareth. Maybe he knew that the Messiah would come from Bethlehem, as the prophets say. And it's probably one of the reasons why he concluded that nothing good will ever come out of Nazareth, aside from that place having a, an unpopular reputation. And three, Jesus spoke to him using the story of Jacob. Jacob was known as a deceiver, but God changed his name to Israel as a affirmation, as an affirmation of God changing him. And early on, Jacob was reported to have seen angels ascending and descending from God, and Jesus used the same language when he spoke to Nathanael. So when Jesus referred to Nathanael being a true Israelite in whom was no deceit, Jesus was probably showing Nathanael, I know you, and I know what you seek. I can let you see God just as Jacob saw angels ascending and descending. If you follow me, I can give you what your heart truly wants and needs. This was what Peter and Nathanael experienced. Because when Jesus finds us, we do not just become known to him. When Jesus found the disciples, it was more than just being acquainted with them. He gave something more. He gave them a value, a purpose, a new way of living. You could even say that he gave them what they were made to do in the first place. In the same way, when he finds us, we are given value, purpose, and a new way of living. We are made to be part of a holy priesthood. We no longer, we are no longer to be conformed to the world, but are to be transformed. We are found to fulfill his purposes for creating us. When Jesus finds us where we are, he makes us his own. He transforms us. 
Can you recall a time when Jesus found you? Maybe it was when you were in your most desperate season. And maybe like Andrew and the other disciples, you were looking for answers. And then you heard of Jesus. Maybe it was when you were like Peter and Nathanael. You were minding your own business when you heard of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You heard it from a friend, you watched it from a video, or you participated in an event that talked about the gospel. No matter who you are, where you are, or what condition you are in, Jesus Christ has found you and calls you his own. Even when we go astray, he looks for you and brings you back because you are his sheep. Maybe that is what we need to recall during this time. Maybe we have wandered so far that we have forgotten who we belong to. Maybe we have become so used to the things that do not really satisfy in this life, craving for one thing after another, covering up our deepest needs and superficial pleasures, when all that we really need can be found in Him who calls us. Maybe the reason God has taken all our busyness away is because we are so lost in the woods that God had to clear out the forest so we can see him coming for us and we can find our way back to him. Whatever the case, now is a good time to remember how Jesus has found us and that we belong to him. Now is a good time to let Christ purify and sanctify us of all the dirt and grime that we've built up in our straying. And for those of you who are hearing this for the first time, maybe this is Jesus calling out to you, saying, come and experience what more God has in store for you. Come and experience what the world can never give you. This may be his way of telling you to stop running away and to come to him and to let him be your shepherd. And what do we expect to find when Jesus finds us? Well, we will find the Messiah. But maybe that doesn't mean anything to us. And that's exactly our problem. We may know that Jesus is God. We may say that Jesus is important and we dare not say a word against him. We may know that Jesus loves us and once upon a time, we even prayed to give our life to Jesus. But then if we were to be honest, we do not wish to have anything to do with Jesus. Do you notice the difference when the first disciples realized that Jesus is the Messiah? After spending time with Jesus, Andrew and Philip rushed to share the good news. We have found the Messiah, they exclaimed. And Nathanael, when after his encounter with Jesus, he declared, You are the Son of God, the King of Israel. All their lives, these men have longed for better days. They were taught that a day would come when God would bring lasting joy and peace. They were taught that God's righteousness will reign perfectly forever and ever, and that the Messiah, God's appointed Savior, will be the one to bring that time in. There was no other way and no other thing on earth that can bring all these goodness except the Messiah. When they found Jesus, they found what they were looking for. And having been found by him and finding him, they had so much joy that it changed the way they lived their lives forever. Because at the end of the day, it is not our jobs, not our wealth, not our power, our relationships, our abilities, or anything else that this world can offer that will bring us the satisfaction that we need. It is Jesus Christ 
It is the Messiah, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world, the true King who can fill our deepest needs. Maybe we don't have this same excitement as the disciples because we want other things instead of God. We would rather have the temporary pleasures of this world rather than the one who can give us dreams of living water so that we may never thirst again. We would rather have the things the world can give that fades, that perishes, and causes more emptiness once they are gone. And because of these things, we end up chasing after one new thing after another. But if we profess to know the eternal value of Christ, then this truth must change the way we live to show that we truly understand and appreciate this. Because it is only after you find Him for who He truly is will you find change in the things that you value. Take the disciples for example. Meeting and knowing Jesus, they willingly left everything and followed him. From the scriptures and tradition, we know later on that all of them who truly saw Jesus for who he is, willingly suffered and even died because they found greater value in serving Jesus Christ, their King. Brothers and sisters, what defines your life right now? Why are you restless for the things that you are restless about? What do the things you crave for and devote all your energies to show about who is ruling your life? And we have to ask, is it worth it? We may have been so used to keeping God out of our lives and pleasing ourselves. Maybe this quarantine is God's way of finding you and revealing to you the condition of your heart so that you may seek Him and know Him more. Find Jesus. Brothers and sisters, you who have been found by Christ, and you whom God is finding and calling to himself. How will you spend this time of pause? We may not be able to come to church or meet together physically in a Bible study group, but God is not limited. There are many ways he is reaching out to you. The question is, will you let yourself be found by him? Or will you choose to run away? Would you like the disciples come and see? Will you find more of Jesus? I pray that in this time of quarantine, we can find ourselves locked down on Christ and get back on track. Arise, find Jesus and let him help you find your way through this life to eternity. God bless. Please stand for the Apostles' Creed. Let us declare what we believe in. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please kneel, if able, or sit for the prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon the earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray. Not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer for missions. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. Grant that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. Let us pray the general thanksgiving. Together, Almighty God, Father of all blessings, we sincerely thank you for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We praise you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for the immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking in holiness and righteousness all our days to Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now for the blessing. Now to God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. It is truly a joy for all of us that we are able to worship God together this morning. And over the week, may we continue to have a prayerful heart 
as we pray for our government, we pray for our brothers and sisters, pray for our country, and we hope that we could see you again next week to join us here in worshiping God. We'll now proceed to our closing song. Hello again, everyone. As we have heard from the message this morning, I hope that we will truly see God with all our hearts. I hope that we will truly make Him the sole desire of our hearts and that we will be able to say that I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Let us sing our closing hymn. Oh